Hey, what's up my friends, Sharon Rocked here with a, another guide for you. Um, this one is in my experience proven. I use it pretty much every single time that I do this boss and it works. It's worked up to uh, 24 with, um, with Grievous, which is what this week is, and it works perfectly. So um, thankfully, because the nature of this boss is pretty much like that, it, it's the same thing every single time, uh, you should be able to follow this guide exactly and, um, and succeed every time. Um, and I guess I didn't even say that. So I'm doing, this is uh, Raging Tempest, which is the second boss in Noku Defensive. Um, if you've been following my channel for a while, you've probably seen my 22 uh, tyrannical guide for this. However, that was one of the first videos I made. Um, I didn't slow it down. I didn't have the ability tracker. So um, this is just basically an improved version of that. And it also proves that the strategy works on higher keys, such as like this 24. Okay, I'm just gonna play by play walk you through exactly what I do here. Um, and you also, I started the video with the talents so you can see uh, the talents that I was running as well. All right, uh, first things first, when the tank pulls the boss, I've noticed sometimes the tank is not ready for the first hit or first couple of hits <laughs> like that. Thankfully, I have a paladin, so they were able to seal themselves back up, but be ready for that. Your, your tank may need a, a big chunk of healing at the beginning. All right, so your goal for the first storm um, is to collect as many balls as you can. Um, also for this lightning strike, uh, go into Ghost Wolf. Try to go in Ghost Wolf for at least four seconds before it goes off, and that will give you 20% DR, um, which actually on higher keys is kind of needed. You, you, uh, It's very hard to survive this, and it can one-shot you if you don't have like a stand buff from a priest or something like that. All right, after that first lightning strike, just slowly heal everybody up. I usually pop Spirit Walker's Grace so that I can collect as many balls as I can. Uh, Primordial Wave as well as... Um, no, sorry, and that's it. And then going into this first storm, I always use Lust, Ancestral Guidance, uh, any Trinket or Stat modifiers that you have, and make sure you have a Cloudburst Totem down as well. Um, since you sometimes fall behind as you're, you know, setting up all your cooldowns, I usually start this phase off with a Nature Swiftness Chain Heal, um, which if you look at the ability tracker is exactly what I use. And then once everybody's good, I just go nuts with the AoE heals, and that works pretty much every single time. Um, and by AoE heals, I mean using Downpour, High Tide Chain Heals, even regular Chain Heals, not bad. Um, and then Healing Surge if anybody gets lower than like everybody else, because um, sometimes people just take a little bit more damage. Uh, also very important for this boss, um, and I advise this regardless of whether you're pugging, whether you're not pugging, whether you're doing a lower key or a higher key, um, always at the beginning of the dungeon tell people uh, to stand near the boss during the storm phases so that you can uh, heal everybody properly. And then usually I mention it again, like going into the boss, just to remind everybody. Um, it may seem obvious to you, but you know some DPS have like never healed before in their lives, so they don't, they don't really get it. Uh, so once again, for these lightning strikes, make sure people are topped up and then go into uh, Ghost Wolf for that Spirit Wolf DR. Um, and then, yeah, in between the storm phases, it's, it's, there's not much going on. I usually put a one Cloudburst Totem down so that I know I have at least one for the next lightning storm. And then I usually just go nuts with like Primordial Wave and Healing Waves and even Healing Surges sometimes. Um, your goal is mostly to collect balls so that you have at least 10 stacks going into the next storm. And it's also just to make sure people are topped up for this lightning strike. Um, so what just happened there is interesting. So I, I told you that I should be going into Spirit Wolf, which I do for the most of the lightning strikes. But if somebody's like low, I would say if they're under like 90% health, um, go ahead and throw a heal on them anyways, if you know that you're not gonna get one shot by the lightning strike, because uh, it's better to, you know, have to heal yourself up more without that DR rather than have somebody else die and get one shot. All right, going into the second uh, storm phase, I always use uh, Ascendance as well as Healing Tide. And then same thing as before, just go nuts with the AoE heals. If you fall behind while you're setting up your cooldowns, start off with the Nature Swiftness Chain Heal, and that will uh, pretty much top the group up if you have uh, 10 stacks of the buff. If you don't have 10 stacks, this uh, fight can be a little bit trickier. It's still doable though, so don't give up. Um, just make sure you're really on point with your cooldowns, you're really on point with who you're targeting with your heals, um, and that you use any uh, defensives that you have if you happen to go into this phase with uh, with like less than 10 stacks or even no stacks. And then basically it's just rinse and repeat. Like you just go around, collect the balls and top people up. Um, just make sure you're not forgetting about thundering while all this is going on and try to sneak in as much DPS in as you can. Um, I know this fight is much more focused on healing so you may not do as much DPS as you normally do, especially on higher keys, but it's always great to sneak in flame shocks, lava bursts, lightning bolts, um, stormkeeper, whatever you can just to make the fight not last as long. 
All right, and you'll see there again, I had a DR set up in Spirit Wolf for that lightning strike, but I saw someone was getting a little bit low. I was nervous, so I just decided to go out and uh, use uh, Riptide on them because I know that the lightning strike was not gonna one-shot me at full health. Um, also make sure you're purging if you're the only purge in the group. Uh, for this group, I wasn't. We had other people purging, which is great. But um, if it is, if it does fall on you, make sure you purge as soon as you can because uh, if you fall behind on healing the tank and they start taking a lot of damage, um, it can be really hard to catch them up. And they can actually die pretty quickly if they're not on top of their cooldowns. This boss hits really hard, and if they go out of melee range, they get the uh, the little wind thing that he does, which extra hurts. So uh, try to make sure you're purging and keeping the tank topped up. All right, final electrical storm phase. Um, I popped uh, Earth Elemental for the 15% health increase. I popped Ancestral Guidance because it's back up again, as well as my Trinket. And then I used uh, Slink as well, just because, you know, why not? Um, I didn't start off this phase with a Nature Swiftness Chain Heal. I actually used it when I saw somebody getting really low and I was nervous I wasn't gonna be able to heal them in time. Um, so once again, if you slow that down and uh, rewind and watch the ability tracker, you'll see exactly the order in which I cast everything in there. And that's it. Once you get to the third, like finish the third storm phase, you're basically home free. You just have to make sure you keep everybody alive until the end of the fight. Um, and if you do get a fourth storm phase, usually it only lasts a couple of seconds because the boss is pretty much dead by then. Um, and to be honest, if you're getting a full fourth storm phase, um, I hate to break it to you, but your DPS is probably not high enough to time this key anyways. Um, but if that, if you do get a fourth storm phase for whatever reason and you guys keep going, um, you will probably have other cooldowns back up as well. Uh, like the ones that you used on the second storm, which would be Ascendance and Healing Tide, you'll likely have those up, so you should be good. All right, so easy, uh, well, not easy. I honestly, I've had a lot of practice with this boss, so for me, like I, I love this fight, first of all, but second of all, I find like it's, it's like clockwork like i do the same thing every single time and it always works so um so I, to me it feels easy i know to you it may not be but it, i promise you if you uh, check out my talents um at the beginning of the video and then follow my cooldown like strategy that i used here uh you should be you should be great even if your play style is a little bit different and you know you have a different healing rotation than i do if you use your cooldowns in the order that i did which is once again ag and lust for the first one as well as any trinket stat modifiers or racials that you have um healing tide and ascendance for the second one and then ancestral guidance and slink for the third one um, that will work every single time make sure that you drop your cloud burst before the electrical storm happens or as it's happening so that you get that huge burst of healing towards the end of the storm um, either to top everyone up after it's done or to save someone from dying at the very end if, if you're falling a little bit behind on heals um, and also don't forget to use uh, your own personals as well like if you use astral shift on the first storm it will be up again for the third um, if you have the earth elemental uh, uh, talented you'll get that 15% health increase as well so just you know you do what you need to do also one other thing I didn't mention just because we didn't have really have one for this group is uh, let your group know if you have DRs like rally uh, AMZ or darkness when you want them um, if you have AMZ I suggest doing it on the first and third storm if you have only one like rally or darkness um, I suggest doing it on the first storm uh, the reason I say that is the first storm is usually the most risky um, because you may only have like but if you get really unlucky, you may only have like three of the ball buffs um, and it can be really tough to heal. Uh, I believe for this run, we had a demon hunter and I asked him to use darkness on the first one, but I think he did not, uh, but it was fine. We still did it anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. It's really just to uh, help mitigate some of the damage, but you should be fully capable of doing it even without that mitigation. Uh, so anyways, I once again, I hope you enjoy this guide and I hope it helps you out if you find yourself in here. Best of luck. Uh, don't let this boss scare you. I promise you if you just, you know, follow the cooldowns that I laid out, regardless of your playstyle, you should be able to heal this. No problem. Um, you know, just believe in yourself. Be confident. And like I said, take some control. Let your group know to uh, stay near the boss for extra healing and when you want their DRs used and all that stuff. Um, anyways, best of luck and I'll see you next time.